The lady from Uncle. The lady. Hi, today I want to take a look at creating a consumer Google account in 2023 and a consumer Google account is one that is free to use. Now I'm creating it for myself and I'm going to click on the top right hand side where it says sign in and then I'm going to click on create account down here. And here I'm being asked what it is I'm actually trying to create a Google account for for my personal use, for my business, or for my child. I'm going to pick personal use because this is actually the most commonly used option and it is also the option, the only option that used to be available back in the day. So pre-existing Google accounts tend to be for personal use. And I think it's quite important to understand that consumer Google accounts, these that are free to use, are ine inevitably um, Google accounts that represent the individual and therefore I'm not going to confuse things by using this down here. This is not quite what one thinks it is. It doesn't create a, a professional Google account. It is more to do with how Google serve you um, services in, in the future. So I'm going to click on my personal use. And on this field here or on this page, I'm being asked to enter my first name and my last name. You might see this sometimes referred to as surname, which means the same thing. And also note that the last name is optional, and that is because not everyone the world over has a last name. So I would stress the importance at this point of entering your real first and last name, if you have a last name. And the reason for that is, should you be asked in future to verify yourself It'd be very difficult for you to verify yourself if you don't know what name you've entered here. So I'm going to enter my real name. And my last name, and I'm going to click on next. And on this page, the same advice applies. Enter your real date of birth. And the reason for that is the same as before. If you're asked your date of birth and you don't know it because you put in something fictitious, you are going to struggle to regain access to your Google account because you won't be verified. You don't have to enter a gender. You could also pick rather not say or custom, but I've entered female. I'm going to click on next. And I'm being offered the, the choice of Google accounts or Gmail Google accounts that I can create, which become the username for my Google account. I can also use a pre-existing email address. And this is a, a, a way of, of Google referring to third party email addresses. Let's say I have a private domain email address that I want to use or Hotmail or Yahoo email address. I can opt for this, but today, I'm going to opt for one of the ones that they've opt, uh, chosen for me. And I'm going to go for Griselda von Uncle 7. Now, I also have the choice to try and pick myself a, a, a Gmail email that I prefer the sound of. So I'm going to just pick this one here. Next, and I'm going to be asked to enter a password. I think you're going to have to use at least eight characters and it should be a strong password with a mix of letters. Make sure you get some uppercase in there as well, numbers and symbols. Please, please, please make it memorable because you don't want to forget your password early on. Now, this is the really important part. You have the option to skip adding a recovery email address. Please do not do that. It's very poor practice to do that. Google allow you to skip this step because they hope that you come to create a Google account, use it and then add a recovery email address when it suits you better. They don't want to make it difficult for you to create a Google account. But I can tell you now that having done this for the past 13 years, Google account recovery, when you don't have recovery options that you've set up for yourself is almost impossible. I think success is roughly about 5% and that is just not good enough. So please don't skip this step. Enter a recovery email address. 
So I'm going to enter one. Click on next. And at this point, you're asked to enter a phone number and you again have the option to skip this step. Please, again, do not skip this step. It is best practice to give yourself at least two options for recovery or verification and your phone number is one of your stronger options. So enter your recovery phone number. Next. And I'm being told to verify my phone number. Now, you might have noticed that there was no option to verify the email address, but I would recommend that you verify at least the phone number. You do have the option to choose not to do so, but please, if you possibly can spare the time, have yourself a code sent to your phone number so that you can verify that number so that should you get signed out and locked out in the next sort of half hour or day, you at least have one way back in. And the codes come through already. And verify. Now it tells me here that I can um, receive video calls and messages, etc. adverts, blah, blah, blah. Um, yes, I'm in or I can skip this. This is the part where now that the number has been verified, it would be okay to skip. So I'm going to skip. And there we have it. I have a Google account with a verified recovery mobile phone number and I'm going to click on next. And here, this is the first sort of agreement page where I'm going to be asked to consider how I want my Google account personalized. And I'm going to click on express personalization because this is no longer about the security and accessibility of my Google account. This is to do with tailored content and advertising. Next. And I'm going to be asked to confirm this. Please read this stuff through. It isn't the usual yada yada as Google likes to call it. And I'm going to confirm that. And this is the bit where you really do have to pay attention. And if you haven't previously read through this or you haven't recently read through it, I would urge you to at least read through the Google Terms of Service before you proceed. This is a sort of a brief synopsis. And here I would ask you to notice that it says, I agree. And bearing in mind what I said that a Google account, a consumer Google account is for an individual, for private personal use, it doesn't say we agree. And it is our first and last name and it is our date of birth, not a company's um, creation date or anything. And it is we personally who agree to the terms of service. So this is a contract that you're basically signing between yourself and Google. And you are the owner and creator of the Google account. So I'm going to click on agree. So if I now click on the top right hand side and go to manage your Google account, you will see that I'm in the Google accounts interface, myaccount.google.com. And if I go down to security, because that is in essence really where my recovery phone number and my recovery email should appear. I have the option now to verify my recovery email address. So I'm going to do that because again, I think it's really, really important that you have at least two recovery options available to you. And I'm going to click on next. And a six digit code has literally just been sent to my email. Having received the code, I enter that and verify my email address. So this is me now signed into my Google account with two verified recovery options. And I'm going to go back here and I'm going to point out two step verification. Currently it's set to off. That is the default position. Also worth noting is I'm actually working on a computer, so I'm in a browser. And it is always better to work on a browser if you possibly can, just because a browser has more options than an app does. So I'm going to um, encourage you to have a look at two step verification. And then press on get started and protect your Google account 
with two-step verification. Now I'm going to use the phone number that I've already set up as my recovery phone number and I'm also going to tell them that I would prefer to receive the codes as text messages. I also have the option here as phone call but because it's a mobile phone number I'm going to stay with um, text message. Next and it's going to again ask me to verify this. Now that I have also set my phone number as a verification phone number and not just as a recovery phone number, I'm okay to turn on two-step verification. Two-step verification is on, but I also want to give myself additional protection. And the one that I favor at this point in time is the eight-digit backup codes. They are printable one-time passcodes. And the reason I favor them is because everything else at the moment is virtual and online. My phone number, uh, my email address, but the backup codes, I can print them off and I can keep them off device. So if I were to travel and lose my phone, I wouldn't lose access to my Google account because I would be able to go to any device and I would be able to use one of these backup codes which I might have in my wallet. There we go, I can, I can print the codes, I can download the codes. I'm gonna download them and print them at a later stage. There we go. And before I go, I'm just gonna click on the top right hand side again and then have you note that it says re recommended actions. And what that does, is it'll actually take you through the security checkup. And that is where you can have a look at the options that you have selected and any other further recommendations that Google have for securing your Google account. And I cannot stress enough that the more you set up for yourself, and I know you might not want to share your data with Google, but the more you set up with Google, the more you can then rely on in future should you need to regain access to your Google account for whatever reason. Thank you for listening and goodbye.